Great Lakes Prepping here. In this video, we're talking about paracord. And more specifically, we're talking about how to make a paracord drawstring bag, something like this. So why would somebody need a heavy duty net style drawstring bag such as this? Well, there's a few reasons. First and foremost, this is a perfect kind of thing to use as a bear bag. If you're not familiar with what a bear bag is, it's basically a bag that you can put all of your food in when you're camping or spending any kind of time out in the woods. Put all your food or smelly stuff in a bag, run it up a tree and hang it there overnight to uh, basically keep bears out of it. These things seem to be a little less common these days now that you've got the Yeti coolers and the various bear proof uh, containers in which you can keep your food and things like that. But I found that there's a lot of uses for a mesh bag like this. Uh, for instance, all of my miscellaneous pots and pans and sort of awkward shaped and sized cookware, I like to stick in one of these bags to kind of keep it all together when I'm uh, throwing my gear in the car to go up north uh, camping or hunting. There's a million and one uses for something like this and uh, they're kind of fun to make. Now I will say there's a ton of different ways that you could make a paracord net bag and there's some very talented and patient people out there who can create uh, basically a work of art out of paracord where the knots are masterpieces and everything is so perfectly symmetrical and just uh, all around looks amazing. Now I don't personally have uh, the patience for that kind of meticulous knot tying. So the scope of this video is more about how to make a heavy duty mesh paracord bag uh, as quickly as possible using some very basic knots and it's going to look perfectly nice and it's going to be completely functional but it's not going to be the refined piece of paracord art that you might see some other people make out there. But for something like this where my patience has a definite threshold, speed is the name of the game. So that's what we're talking about today. So we're going to jump right in and I'm going to show you how I make one of these paracord nets. First, let's talk about the materials we're going to need to make this thing. Right off the bat, we've got our pre-cut lengths of paracord. Doesn't matter what color, I have a lot of black paracord, so that's what I use. So what we have is nine nine-foot lengths of paracord and one five-foot length of paracord. Next, pretty much the only tools we're gonna need for this, a pair of sharp scissors and a lighter. I like to use a barbecue lighter like this, makes it a little easier. And lastly, just to make things uh, a little easier on the drawstring, I like to use either a metal clip like this or an ordinary carabiner or really anything along those lines. I happen to have this laying around so that's what I'm going to use. Lastly we've got this very colorful bucket. This is basically just used as a form around which we'll make the net bag. And just for a, a little bit of an easier time doing this and because I'm not that great at eyeballing measurements, I've uh, marked on this bucket about every two inches with a strip of blue painters tape and this will just help us keep the uh, the knots and the rows of our mesh more or less uh, in kind of an even uh, distance and then lastly I don't know if you can see it from here but I've marked little uh, little spots around the uh, uh, sort of diameter of the bucket with just a couple of lines of sharpie and that's going to help uh, space out our very first uh, part here so everything again kind of stays even as we go. So it's completely optional if you want to put these markings on your bucket or not. If you're good at kind of eyeballing things you don't have to do that step. But I've done that and uh, I'm pretty much ready to get started. And the very first thing that I want to do is take the five foot length of paracord and just tie it around uh, the top of the bucket kind of above this first lip here. And I want to make it uh, pretty tight, but not so tight uh, that I can't sort of uh, pull this off of the lip later on when we're done. So because, like I said, I'm not a knot connoisseur and I want to make this thing sort of as headache free as possible, I'm going to use the most basic knots, uh, pretty much a, the first step of a shoelace knot, and that's it. It's not going to go anywhere. And uh, I got a little excess here. I always make sure I cut these a little longer than I'm probably going to need. 
And this right here, uh, I don't actually need anymore. I could just cut this right off. But for now, I'll just move it out of the way and I'll worry about cutting it shorter later. All right, next we're gonna start adding our nine foot length of paracord. For this step, you wanna fold the length of paracord in half and take the looped end and tuck it underneath your shorter piece of paracord like this. And then just pull the rest of it through and pull it tight. And this is where I like to line them up with my little uh, Sharpie marks on the bucket. And I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around. All right, and there we have it. We've got all of our longer lengths looped over and uh, kind of just hanging freely off the sides here. Uh, a quick note to mention about the bucket that I forgot to mention uh, earlier on, and that's you're gonna wanna remove the handle from the bucket. If you don't, you're gonna end up sort of weaving that handle into place in such a way that uh, you're never gonna be able to remove the bag off of the bucket when you're done. So uh, just pop that handle off before you get started. Uh, if you're going to make a bunch of these, you could just have yourself a dedicated bucket like this. Uh, otherwise, just carefully pop that handle off and you'll be able to put it back on later. Now it's time to tie a million knots. And like I mentioned, there are some very pretty and tidy knots that you can use for this step. But I just simply don't have the patience for a lot of it. So I'm going to use just a basic knot the most simple uh, kind of knot that you could possibly use. And so what I want to do is take the sides of uh, two adjacent uh, uh, pieces of paracord here and I'm going to tie these together like this. See the most simple knot there ever was. I'm going to do my best to keep this pretty well in between the, uh, the two notches here at the top and try to make sure that the knot tightens up right on one of my uh, blue tape measuring marks. Pretty much just like that. And then I'll turn this whole bucket a little bit and do it again on the next two. see how our netting is starting to form. And I'm going to do this all the way around and then we'll go on to the next row. All right, we've gone all the way around and now we're ready to do the next row. And I think by now you can probably kind of see where this is going. As we go all the way around, we're gonna create this net pattern all the way down. And this part's a little bit tedious and it takes a while. So I'll do a little bit of this, maybe uh, fast forward through it, but I'm not gonna make you sit here and, and watch through uh, me, me tie all these knots. Um, you'll get the idea as we go and I'll, I'll kind of pick it up when we're getting near the bottom.
All right, so we've repeated all the way around several rows and we're at the bottom of the bucket now. And you see, I got a lot of excess paracord and I could make this net quite a bit longer if I wanted to. And what I would do is just kind of shimmy this up on the bucket a little bit and keep going. Um, or I could just kind of hang it off the side of a table and, and keep doing more and more rows. But this is about as big as I want it. So I probably could have made these uh, strands of paracord a little shorter, probably about eight feet instead of nine, but that's okay. And uh, now what I need to start doing is is bringing these closer together. So I'm gonna continue with a couple more rows of these knots, but instead of making them about, uh, you know, even in height and width, I need to tie them so they're a bit shorter. And we're gonna do that for a couple of, uh, a couple of rows, and that's gonna uh, start to bring our knots a little closer uh, towards the center here. All right, now the last row of knots I'm gonna do before I pull this whole thing off the bucket is just to kind of end each of these rows, or I guess you could call them columns, with a simple double knot. Just, uh, just like you would start tying your shoe, except do a couple of them. And I find that I can get a little closer with this kind of knot than, uh, than using the other kind of knot. But, it really doesn't matter which you use. And the last thing I'll do before I pull this whole thing off the bucket is just sort of trim up the excess ends of my original piece of paracord that goes around the top. So I'll just cut them a little short and then I'll use my lighter to fuse the ends a bit. And uh, you know, anytime you cut paracord, you should just fuse them with a, a little bit of uh, fire from your, your lighter or a match. Just kind of melt the end a little bit, keeps it from fraying any further. Uh, also kind of helps the knot from unraveling if it uh, starts to loosen a little bit. You just need a little bit, just enough to kind of singe the uh, the very end like that. Okay. So, I'm gonna pull this whole thing off. Kind of work it around if it's a little snug on the bucket here. And there we go. So now we've got something that loosely resembles a squid. And uh, there's a lot of ways that you can sort of very nicely, meticulously close up the end in a way that looks beautiful and clean. But as I've said a few times now, uh, I don't have the patience for a lot of that. And, and, and I'm not, I'm not a, a real hardcore knot guy. So I think about what's the quickest way that I could close this up in a very strong fashion. And uh, well, if you guessed one giant knot with all of these strands, then you would be correct. Get that as tight as you can make it. So you see, I could have made this as long as I wanted. I could have just kept going forever. I could, I could make one of these, you know, big enough to hold uh, a couple of pumpkins if that's what I really wanted. But uh, it isn't. So this is what we're. Uh, this is what we got right now. Now <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and trim each of these excess uh, strands here, and then fuse it with the lighter. There we go. So the way that we put this together from the very first step, it's uh, automatically 
a drawstring closure at the top. And I like to use something like this or a carabiner because it ensures that uh, you know, it uh, has something easy to kind of hang on to. And you're not going to worry about anything unraveling or anything like that. And just the first thing I saw in my kitchen to uh, demonstrate the finished product here is a big old can of Folgers decaf coffee. We've got our sort of end here with the, the metal clip. It cinches shut, perfect drawstring, and there we have it. Now if you like the idea behind this, but you think that you would want a much bigger a net bag, then use something besides the five gallon bucket. Uh, you can use a garbage can or a particularly huge stock pot. I don't know. I like the bucket because it's got kind of that uh, lip around the top that keeps everything sort of in place while I'm working. But a garbage can would work equally well and it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, perfectly round. You know, or more rectangular shaped would work just fine. You just have to kind of mind uh, your spacing between each uh, set of knots in each row to make it uh, more or less even. If it's not perfectly even, that's okay. This thing certainly isn't 100% even. And uh, you know what, it's not even especially pretty, but it's incredibly strong, very functional, and uh, will work great as a mesh bag for keeping food away from bears or anything else I need. So that's it for now. If you liked the video, click the subscribe button and stay up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.